The name Smoky Eunuch brings out smiles, stories, legends, and for many people, admiration. Eunuch was an amazing mind of his racing era, and while the stories of creative rulebook interpretations and vexing technical officials are among the most told, his true mechanical skills in building, testing, tuning, and developing engines have had a long-lasting impact not only on racing, but the automotive industry as a whole. In many ways, the work he did for companies like Ford and General Motors is more important than what he did on the racetrack. Now, there's one element of Smokey Unix mechanical life that most people don't know about, and that's his collection of patents. Yes, the man who treated the NASCAR rulebook like a cheap grocery store novel did know how to follow a few rules, and those were along the lines of inventing, designing, applying for, and being granted patents. They range from the creatively mundane to the functionally crazy, and we're going to take a look at them here. Between the years of 1976 and 1994, Smokey Eunuch was credited with six major U.S. patents. Seven if you count them one way, but we'll get to that in a minute. It seems the best way to lay these out is not really in chronological order, but perhaps by the level of complexity and creativity they employed. The good news is that the first one takes us back to the beginning of his two-decade phase as an inventor, 1976. Now this one is an interesting take on a valve cover breather setup to ventilate an engine. Typically, a valve cover breather vent is pushed into one side of the engine's valve covers in a V8, and that's that. In this case, Eunuch wanted both sides vented, and then he tied them to a central filtering point. Now the mild plot twist here is that both sides would have the ability to be vented in the forward and rearward part of the valve cover, and there would be a check ball on either side to prevent oil from being sent to the breather filter. If the car is accelerating hard and all the oil ran to the rear, the check ball will go that way as well, allowing the front leg of the vent to work and the oil to remain controlled. The same would happen under hard braking in the opposite direction. Revolutionary? By no means. Interesting? Yeah. We now move to 1991. And in 1991, Smokey Unit filed a patent for a new, quote, oil change system and method. Now, it took until 1993 with a couple of revisions to get this one signed off on, but it was eventually approved and granted. So what's the problem being solved here? As Smokey, or his lawyers, wrote in the patent application, many engines now have oil filters placed in such a way that it's impossible to fill them prior to installation. This means that a drained engine will be started with largely empty oil passages and an empty oil filter. Unit claimed that in his testing, he saw some engines take up to 20 seconds to reachieve full lubrication and pressure. It was this period of potential wear and damage he was looking to eliminate. But how? The concept here is really simple and pretty brilliant. Eunuch designed an oil filter, a couple of different ones actually, with a pressure fitting on the bottom and one design that had it on the top. It would allow the mechanic to drain the engine, remove the old oil filter, and then install this new filter, hook up a pressure line with oil in it, and fill the engine from the bottom up. With a full filter, the oil would begin flowing instantly upon startup, the pressurized filling system would work as a back flush for the oil pump itself, and the period of potential metal-to-metal -metal contact would be completely gone, replaced by this ingenious method. One question here, why did this go nowhere? We're guessing it's because the, quote, that's the way we've always done it mentality has ruled the automotive world for so long, but that's the way it goes, and breaking in and out of that mentality will be very, very hard. Next up, we venture inside the internal combustion engine for Smokey Unix take on a way to increase fuel efficiency, power, and the overall effectiveness of the internal combustion engine. Now, one of the things that engineers have long known about engines is that air, which is turbulent or swirling, is better at atomizing fuel than air that is traveling in a more linear, uniform way. There have been plenty of ways engineers have worked to induce swirl with how the air flows through the cylinder heads, through the valves, and more. If you can picture it, the idea is to have the air entering the cylinder like a spiraling staircase, filling it up before being compressed by the piston. Well, Smokey Eunuch patented what he thought was a surefire way to increase the swirl in ways theretofore untried. He designed a piston and combustion chamber design that could only really be described as a yin and yang arrangement. The piston had a high side and a low side, and as the combustion chamber had them to a corresponding layout, they would come together as the piston came up. Conceptually, when that piston was coming up through the bore for the compression stroke, the air would be forced into a swirling corkscrew as the piston and combustion chamber worked together via their shape to achieve that. Now here's an excerpt from the actual patent application. Quote, Testing of an internal combustion chamber and piston configuration, embodying the present invention, has confirmed the rotational movement in the fuel mixture during both the compression and power strokes of the piston. 
It is believed once motion in the fuel mixture is imparted during the compression stroke, the kinetic energy of the mixture constituents cause the mixture to continue rotating throughout the power stroke. Moreover, it is also believed that during the combustion process, the same areas of low and high pressure created by the piston cylinder head structure also promote rotative movement in the reacting mixture during the power stroke. Unlike the prior art, the present invention induces a continuing rotational movement in the fuel mixture during both the compression and power strokes. This rotational movement enhances and promotes combustion activity. End quote. As far as we know, this idea has never been employed in any production engine or anything outside of the testing that Unic was doing with it in the 1980s. The patent was applied for in 1982 and granted in 1984. Next up, we continue down the engine front. One of Smokey Unix's most famous inventions and one that he did patent was his famous hot vapor engine. This was one of his proudest and most long-standing projects. Smokey Unix and Ralph Johnson, his brilliant right-hand man, worked on this idea for decades. Supposedly it was Johnson, well a dyno operator at General Motors, who first got the idea for the hot vapor engine in the 1950s and the two worked to refine it over the years. Multiple successful examples were built and there was a time when it appeared that this seemingly odd concept was actually going to go into full production around 1990. But alas, it didn't. Now, if you're unfamiliar with this project and design, effectively Unic turned a conventional thinking of combustion engines on its head. Rather than work to lower the intake temperatures, he worked to raise them. Smokey believed, and was seemingly proven right by subsequent engines he built in this form, that getting the fuel to its vapor point before introducing it into the cylinder would result in more complete, powerful, and efficient combustion. In basic terms, the carburetor was mounted on a device called a vaporizer. Heated by engine coolant, it would raise the temperature to about 200 degrees. From here, the mixture was pushed by a, quote, homogenizer, which, for all intents and purposes, as a turbocharger, into a fuel mixture heater, which was the intake manifold being heated by exhaust gases that were bled off before they went to the hot side of the turbo. This is what would push the fuel mixture up to a temperature in the range of 450 degrees. From there, it would head straight into the engine, where the combustion process would occur. By using more of the engine's heat energy and not sending it all out the exhaust or to the radiator, Unic had created what he believed to be a better mousetrap. This layout turned a 90-horsepower Fiero engine into a 250-horsepower Fiero engine and was used in other applications on Ford engines and Dodge engines over the years. According to Johnson and others who were interviewed about the engine over time, pushing the exhaust gas temperatures into the range of 2,600 degrees, an area where the burn rate of the hydrogen molecule in gasoline can be better controlled, whereas at lower temperature around 2,250 degrees, they're apt to ignite and cause early detonation, was the key to the success of this design. The engine ran a very, very lean air-fuel mixture as well. So why did no one build it? Perhaps longevity concerns? Massive temperatures in cold weather states and the metallurgy of the day? One thing we can say for certain is that every indicator of the hot vapor engine was positive and actually functioned as advertised. In fact, Smokey Eunuch built an identical Fiero from his own for a guy in Florida who then drove it for two and a half years without incident. Was Smokey just ahead of his time or was there some major flaw in his thinking? Many of the hot vapor engine secrets went to the grave with Mr. Smokey Eunuch. Now, while the hot vapor engine has been largely lost to history, the next patent is not only awesome, it's a piece of equipment that every very serious race engine building operation in the country has. No, we're not talking about mom and pop shops, but the premier names in the world of engines across motorsports use this equipment. In 1994, Smokey Unic applied for a patent entitled, quote, Apparatus and Method for Testing Combustion Engines, end quote. Now, that's not as catchy as what we now know it as today the Spintron machine. Engine dynos have been around for a long, long time, and they continue to be an incredibly valuable resource for engine builders today, but Smoke Unix saw the drawbacks that an engine dyno had when doing in-depth testing. For starters, the engine had to be running, and that meant noise, hot parts, wear and tear, and all the limitations that came with it. He surmised that if you built a device that could spin the engine in its operating range and never have to run the actual engine itself, a ton of different elements could be tested. Things like valve train performance and behavior, engine lubrication, oil aeration, airflow, and many, many more. Unic proposed that in order to spin a modern racing engine up to its operating range, an electric motor of at least 250 horsepower and preferably 300 horsepower would be needed. 
He supposed that the ability to measure the output of the electric motor needed to spin the race engine would be a way to measure friction and power loss. For instance, one set of valve springs could be swapped for another, and the change needed in drive power could be measured to see if they picked up or lost friction. The engine dyno was not the best way to test camshafts either. With this machine, valve train habits could not only be measured, but observed with high-speed cameras using windows and cutaway engines. Were the lifters following the camshaft lobes? Were they being lofted? Were the push rods bending and deflecting? The valve springs binding? These are just a few of the thousands of questions that can be answered with this piece of equipment. Unic built an example of this unit called the Smoketron 9500. Now, it was laid out differently and certainly did not have the level of refinement that the modern Spintron machines of today do. Bob Fox of Trend Performance is the man who packaged the concept and refined it into the machine we now know, but Smokey Unit conceived it, and he had his up and running first. Consequently, the Smoketron 9500 is now at the Don Garlitz Museum of Drag Racing in Ocala, Florida. The final patent of Smokey Unic is the most interesting and the most telling. It was filed in 1996 and granted in 1997. The title, quote, Racetrack with Novel Crash Barrier and Method, unquote. Yes, Smokey Unic not only patented a racetrack and crash barrier design, but also the concept for a racing series, which he was apparently going to try and put together. The reason that this is the most interesting patent in his bunch is because of the fact that it seems to represent what Unix saw as the perfect solution to many of racing's ills, like budgetary disparities, racetrack safety, rules interpretations, and more. So, what was this idea? Wild in many ways, sensible in others. Let's dive in. He proposed to call this the American Racing League, and to say that his plan was ambitious is grossly underselling it. Unic proposed the construction of 16 completely identical 1.5-mile tri-oval racetracks across the country. Each track would host two races per year. They'd all have straights banked at 5.5 degrees and corners banked at 15 degrees. The tracks would be identical down to the last detail, including the concrete mix that would make up the racing surface so to allow better grip for racing in the rain. Most interestingly in this concept, Smokey Unic had conceived the current NASCAR charter system 30 years ago. He suggested that 34 car franchises be sold to start. 25 of those franchises would be guaranteed a spot in the following season, assuming they finished in the top 25. The remaining nine would be potentially sold or otherwise evaluated for their performance. Obviously, that part varies from the current NASCAR system, but the franchise element is very real. The tracks themselves would be pretty interesting. Using a multiple-layer crash wall of construction, the walls would be lined with what we now refer to as safer barriers. But instead of the modern safer barriers, these would be made in modules and created using tires that were mounted and linked together. They could be replaced if crashed into and were designed to give way and absorb impacts from potentially wrecking race cars. The stands would be elevated above the track. There would be an elevated position on the pit side of the track for fans to look down and watch the mechanics as well. But most interestingly, there would be a tunnel to pass under the track. And that tunnel would have clear windows looking through the racing surface at the start-finish line and in other locations. In the patent application, Unix states that teams could use this idea to look at tire wear and check other things as they were going across the start-finish line. Now, this sounds completely wacko, but it also sounds completely awesome at the same time. Unix really thought of ways to lower the cost of professional racing in this series, and some of the track ideas are interesting on that front. Teams would not have to have 18-wheeler trucks to carry their stuff and all their equipment around because each team would have their own fully stocked garage at every racetrack, and they would be uniform. Tools, air, lubricants, all the necessary things would be at each of these tracks to service the race cars and fix them in the event of crashes during an event. Each pit stall would be supplied with its own fuel hose, and that fuel would be metered as each team would be limited to the same usage per race. There would be no loose fuel barrels or containers around. The stock car style race cars, Smokey proposed that they would be completely spec from the tires to the chassis components to the bodies. Even the engine components, most importantly the intake manifolds and cylinder heads, would be provided to the teams by the league at each race to ensure they were unmodified. Short blocks would be rigorously inspected for legality in terms of bore and stroke, compression height on pistons, and etc. In many ways, Smokey Unit conceived a racing series in the same way a guy who escaped from jail is asked to design the next prison by law enforcement. This racing series is the automotive version of a computer hacker hired by the government to increase cybersecurity. It seems to run counter to everything the guy did in his career, 
but it also reflects his ideas on, quote, fixing the inherent flaws he saw in racing, especially in NASCAR. That's a look at Smokey Unix patents. If you want to go all the way down the rabbit hole, use Google Patent Search and you can read every word of these filings from the mundane to the fascinating. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe for more racing, gearhead, and historical automotive content.